Hi everyone, today we will do the mandibular third molars. The mandibular third molars, they supplement the first and second molars in function. So they have the similar grinding function. But these teeth, the mandibular third molars, they are they have a considerable variation in their size and shape so they may be smaller than usual uh, smaller than the mandibular first and second molars are sometimes they are larger in size sometimes these teeth because these are the last teeth to erupt in the mandibular arch and because of this sequence of eruption or this pattern of eruption sometimes they fail to erupt either completely or they erupt only partial they are only partially erupted a condition known as impaction and sometimes these teeth fail to form uh, a condition known as agenesis of the mandibular third molars and this is quite common these teeth usually emerge into the oral cavity by the age of 17 to 21 years and the roots of these teeth are completed by the age of 18 to 25 years. So these are the models of the mandibular third molars. This one is the model of the right mandibular third molar. And this is the model of the left mandibular third molar. So the mandibular third molar molars they are wider at the wider mesiodistally at the contact areas there are two cusps the larger one is the mesiobuccal cusp and the smaller one is the distobuccal cusp but usually the cusps are shorter and they are less sharp as compared to the second molar or the first molar sometimes this tooth has two roots like the like the molars like the first and the second molar like the mesial and the distal root but sometimes the roots are fused like this in case of two roots usually the roots are inclined in a distal direction but here the roots are short and they are fused with each other the cervical line it has a sharp dip in the center and then it is straight this is the lingual aspect from the lingual aspect you can see mesiolingual cusp and this is the distolingual cusp in between the two cusps there is a groove lingual developmental groove the mesiodistal dimension the mesiodistal dimension from the lingual aspect is less as compared to the buccal aspect so therefore you can see part of the distal surface and part of the mesial surface from the lingual aspect the cervical line is straight you can also see a groove on the, on the root surface this is the mesial aspect from the mesial aspect the tooth is very much similar to the mesial aspect of the second molar except that it is smaller in dimensions this is the buccal surface which is more convex as compared to the lingual surface this one is the mesiobuccal cusp this is the mesial marginal ridge you cannot see any part of the occlusal surface from this aspect this one is the mesiolingual cusp this is a cervical line which is comparatively which is straight as compared to the teeth present anterior to third molar the root surface is smooth and you cannot see the buccal side much of the buccal side or the lingual side from the mesial aspect the distal aspect the crown tapers buccolingually so this is the is the distal buccal cusp this cusp is the distolingual cusp so you can see some part of the occlusal surface from the distal aspect the cervical line is straight because the crown tapers in the buccolingual direction, you can see some part of the buccal aspect and some part of the lingual aspect from the distal aspect. Morphology from the occlusal aspect is similar to that of the second molar. So it has four cusps. But the outlines of the stoth from the occlusal aspect are more rounded. The larger cusp is the mesiobuccal and the mesolingual and this one is the distobuccal and the distolingual cusps that, that are smaller than the mesial cusps. 
The buccolingual dimension is more on the mesial side as compared to the distal side where the buccolingual dimension is less. You can see a central developmental groove that is dividing the tooth into the buccal surf, uh, in, into the buccal part and the lingual part. You can see a centri another groove from running in between two buccal cusps to, towards the two lingual cusps. So forming a cross shaped pattern. More of the buccal surface is visible as compared to the lingual side from the occlusal aspect. 